Hi, this is Adam Kunzmiller with Board Game Geek at Gen Con 50, and I'm joined by Travis Reynolds with Queen Games, and we're here to take a look at Merlin. So what is Merlin? So Merlin is a game from Stefan Feld and Michael Rennick, um, and in Merlin, all the characters uh, are knights of the round table, mm -hmm. and they're joined by Merlin, and they move around the round table, which is a rondelle, oh, nice. and they take various actions to... Uh, enact the history of you know King Arthur and the Holy Grail and the Excalibur and everything else. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I mean, as they're going around the rondelle, what kind of things are they doing? So in uh, in this game, we've got our castle here, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a variety of different stuff. We've got influence markers, and we've got our henchmen, and we've got the dice. The dice are what drive our movement on the rondelle. Okay. At the beginning of every turn, we're going to roll all these dice. So we roll them. And these are our movement for our knights, and this die lets us move Merlin. Okay. okay? All of our knights have to move clockwise. Mm -hmm. Merlin can move either direction. So when it's my turn, if I'm blue, I could move five, three, or two. So if I move two, I'm going to get to here. That's going to let me swap some of these cards. I'll tell you about the cards in a second. But if I move three, it's going to put me here. That lets me build at one of our strongholds out in the countryside. So we've got some strong Feld classics here. Oh, we've got this rondelle with all these different actions and then all these different things to interact with. When there's those tons actions. of actions out there. I mean, you're building <clears throat> castles, you're scoring for how many uh, mm -hmm. banners you have, you're putting an influence marker where you have a shield, you're, uh, yeah, there's tons of actions, yes. Cool. And this is really cool. Is this supposed to look like a, a scroll or a map or something? Yeah, it looks like a map, and you're building castles in the countryside. So, as with all Feld games, this is another way you're going to score. <laughs> it's another part. That's another part for, uh, so for if, your victory points. If I build yeah. a castle here, it's going to give me one of these resources, which is either an influence in one of the different castles on the board, or it's going to give me a flag, which are these from one of the castles, or it's going to give me a shield. Plus, it gives me influence in this gray scoring region. It's going to score three for me if I'm the, if I'm in control of it. Obviously, the big one here is this five-point one. There's not as many castles there, so it's kind of a balance, right? I go here and I get this castle bonus, but if I go here, I don't get a bonus, but it gives me influence to maybe score more at the end, at right. the end of each. There's three scoring phases. There's six turns, and after every other round, there's like a scoring phase. So that, that's what we do over here. The way you build here, when you choose to build, you have to turn in a resource which, for example, Blue started with a gray resource. If Blue wanted to build a castle, they could burn a gray resource and build a castle here or, or here, that line. because that's where the diagonals right. tell us that we can build. So if I built there, then I would take one of those, that would have been my action, whatever. Uh, I think the three was the one that let me do that. I would put that out on the round table, play would pass, go around. Okay. So we're gonna get to do all of those. And again, Merlin can go either way. Um, these flags that we pick up throughout the game all have a special power, and about half of them let you mitigate the luck of the dice. Okay. Right? So like the purple one lets you change a die to any face, mm -hmm. and the orange one lets you take any other player's action, so any oh, nice. space that an eye is on, you could take that action. Always, always good in a rondelle game. Yep, and this one lets you move straight across the table and take that action. Nice. Um, and then this one lets you go counterclockwise. Okay. The other two do not mitigate the dice, they do something else. but. Um, so it lets you kind of counterbalance the dice as you have the chance to pick up sure. some flags. So Looks like we've touched on a lot of things here. What are these cards for? So those cards, as you might guess, are another way to score throughout the oh, game. shocking! So everybody <laughs> starts with a hand of three of these cards, and they've got a bunch of criteria on them. The ones mm -hmm. I started with were pretty simple. They say, if I have this henchman, we all have four henchmen, in this castle, which would match up with the, the gray right. one over there, mm -hmm. then at the end of that action, I can drop that card and score one so you point. Just accomplished it. Yeah, every action, every die is an action. So you can do up to four per turn. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, as you can see, get more complicated. Like the three over there says, I have to have a blue resource and a brown flag and, an, and influence in that in castle. That castle yeah. And I'm gonna score three points for it, yeah. And... Um, Looks like they also have some sort of... That's for a uh, uh, an expansion piece. Oh, okay. It's going to be a board that you uh, that adds even more stuff, of course. Great. And what triggers the end of the game? So six turns. We're going to go right, every right. other turn. We're going to mm -hmm. score every other turn. We're going to score. The things we score for are here. Then we're going to score for influence in each castle. And the way that works is 
whoever has the most influence scores one for every marker there. Oh, interesting. Yep. So, so if nobody's fighting you for you, you don't get much for it. Right, right. And if it's a tie, you're going to split, and there are some things that let you claim the tiebreaker. Um, then we're going to score for our um, henchmen. So every henchman you have on the board scores a point. So that's the end, game, end turn scoring, and then this is the end game score. All right, and how long would a typical game last? Uh, the box says 75. I think that's probably about right. Yeah. Um, first time might take a little longer. Sure. As with any Feld game, you know, he's got a lot of intricacies. Um, one, of the, one of the neat things you can do is another in-game scoring. You can see all the ones that have these shields on them. Mm -hmm. Those will all let you score during the game. That's score for every resource marker you have, every flag you have. If you do those with Merlin, you have these nifty magic staves over here, mm -hmm. and you can use those three times a game. And any action you're taking with Merlin, you can double the effect of it. Oh, nice. So if you got a big score, I can double it. Or if you really need an extra shield, because every scoring phase you have to fight these traitors off. And when you have a shield, that shield lets me fight him off. These black flags will let you fight traitors off. Any traitor you don't fight off is going to cost you points. So you may want to pick up extra shields or extra flags, whatever it might be. But you only have three for the whole game. Okay. Um, the other thing we haven't touched on are these apples. Everybody uh -huh. starts with one. Every time you claim the grail over there, the grail. Oh, that's right. You get another apple. An apple does the same thing basically as the purple, which lets you change the face of a die. So that's another way to mitigate the luck sure. of the dice. And of course, we didn't touch on Excalibur. When you claim Excalibur, it lets you kill one of these traitors. And at the end of your turn, if you killed all of the traitor knights you, and you have Excalibur, you score three points. Nobody else scores. They're just avoiding loss, but Excalibur lets you actually score if you took care of all the traders. Great. And when will this be available? It'll be at Essen, and it'll be on Kickstarter. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Travis, for walking us through Merlin.